Chapter 54. Lev. It's not Connor's imagination. Levi Jedediah Calder is one of the very special guests of Happy Jack Harvest Camp, and he's wearing his tithing whites once more. He does not see Connor on the volleyball court because the tithes are strictly instructed not to look at the terribles. Why should they? They have been told from birth that they are of a different caste and have a higher calling. Lev may still have the remnants of a sunburn, but his hair is cut short and neat, just as it used to be, and his manner is sensitive and mild, at least on the outside. He has an appointment for unwinding in 13 days. Chapter 55. Risa. She plays on the roof of the chop shop, and her music carries across the fields to the ears of more than a thousand souls waiting to go under the knife. The joy of having her fingers on the keys again can only be matched by the horror of knowing what's going on beneath her feet. From her vantage point on the roof, she sees them brought down the maroon flagstone path that the kids call the red carpet. Kids who walk the red carpet have guards flanking them on either side, with firm grips on their upper arms, firm enough to restrain them, but not enough to bruise them. Yet, in spite of this, Dalton and the rest of his band play like it doesn't matter at all. How can you do this? she asks during one of their breaks. How can you watch them day after day, going in and never coming out? You get used to it, the drummer tells her, taking a swig of water. You'll see. I won't. I can't. She thinks about Connor. He doesn't have this same reprieve from unwinding. He doesn't stand a chance. I can't be an accomplice to what they're doing. Hey, says Dalton, getting annoyed. This is survival here, and we do what we have to do to survive. You got chosen because you can play, and you're good. Don't throw it away. Either you get used to kids walking down the red carpet, or you'll be on it yourself, and we'll have to play for you. Risa gets a message, but it doesn't mean she has to like it. Is that what happened to your last keyboard player? Risa asks. She can tell it's a subject they'd rather not think about. They look at one another. No one wants to take on the question. Then the lead singer answers with a nonchalant toss of her hair, like it doesn't matter. Jack was about to turn 18, so they took him a week before his birthday. He was not a very happy Jack, says the drummer, and hits a rim shot. That's it? They just took him? Business is business, says the lead singer. They lose a ton of money if one of us turns 18, because then they've got to let us go. I've got a plan, though, says Dalton, winking at the others, who have obviously heard this before. When I'm getting close to 18, and they're ready to come for me, I'm jumping right off this roof. You're going to kill yourself? I hope not. It's only two stories. But I'll sure get busted up real bad. So they can't unwind you like that. They have to wait until you heal. By then I'll be 18 and they'll be screwed. He high-fives the drummer and they laugh. Risa can only stare in disbelief. Personally, says the lead singer, I'm counting on them lowering the legal age of adulthood to 17. If they do, I'll go to the staffers and counsellors and the friggin' doctors. I'll spit right in their faces and they won't be able to do anything but let me walk right out that gate on my own two legs. Then the guitar player, who hasn't said a word all morning, picks up his instrument. This one's for Jack, he says, and begins playing the opening chords to the pre-war classic, Don't Fear the Reaper. The rest of them join in, playing from the heart, and Risa does her best to keep her eyes away from the red carpet.